Hey, and welcome to Advanced Self-Soothing for the Modern Queer and anyone with a trauma history who just needs some more ideas for self-soothing. I'm Kelly Dunham, and I'm a comedian and a nurse and a non-binary middle-aged queer, and you're not going to believe this, also a trauma history. Surprising, right? I've been super lucky, and I would say privileged, to have access to therapy and education about PTSD, and I participated in the Sanctuary Program back in the day in Philly, and I feel I've had a lot of access. And at the same time, I found that there are still some situations where I end up so much more emotionally activated than I wanted to be. So I started looking for more tips and tricks to self-soothe. And so these are some of these trips and tips and tricks. And these are in some ways, some of these are mine. Some of these are crowdsourced. Um, I also did a, a workshop at the five college gender and sexuality conference at Hampshire. Um, some of these, some of the suggestions came from there. Um, and these tips aren't for the hardest moments. When you're actively triggered or in a spiral, you know that it's not a substitute for any kind of professional health care. Uh, that's what my lawyer would tell me if I actually had a lawyer, I suppose. It might be laughable almost in the face of trauma when you're really very, very activated. But for me, sometimes small things, you know, can be helpful, perhaps for you as well. And sometimes doing anything uh, helps you feel more in control when you're feeling really out of control. And of course, there are going to be uh, limitations like this is done from it's crowdsource, but also from my perspective. And so as my relative privilege as a white person, as a college educated person, like I realized there might be things I've missed. Um, and so I'm going to leave my contact information at the end of this video. And if you have suggestions or uh, thoughts or whatever, I would love to hear them. So and I'm really sorry that you're having to deal with trauma. And yeah, I'm really sorry. OK, so. What is self-soothing and trauma? What do they have to do with each other? You already know, right? But if you think in terms of a radio dial, uh, in our, uh, we're in a post-traumatic state, sometimes we might feel like our emotions are on zero, on like we're very, very numb, or they're at a 10. Or more commonly, right, like just those two instead of something in the middle. Or more commonly, that we start out, like for example, a lot of times when I talk with people about when they're anxious and triggered, it's in going to the healthcare provider, right? So because you've had a previous bad experience or there's something, you know, there's triggering things in the environment, uh, you go in starting at a seven, right? You're going in setting or an eight. And then when some nonsense happens, which will happen at a healthcare provider's office, right? Then you get escalated to a nine instead of you, if you were able to like start out at a three or four, when nonsense happens, you're just up to a five. Right. And it's easier to deal with. And so self-soothing is all about trying to bat yourself, not bat yourself, keep yourself further down on the scale. And so self-soothing lowers the volume. Right. And if radio dials aren't your thing, because, for example, you're born after the time of radios. Well, um, you can think about a, a thermometer for metaphor reasons. And but not the thermometer that I placed in this presentation, which I accidentally found a fundraising thermometer. And that makes even less sense. And then my friend pointed out that. Uh, actually, nobody even really reads regular thermometers anymore, that they just read digital thermometers. But anyway, I think you understand a zero to 10 scale. Um, and probably you can imagine regardless. So here's the quiz. Here's the starting quiz. Who's the expert on your life and your self-soothing? For the love of Mike, you. You are. You are here. Wherever you are, that's where you are. I mean, that's obvious, right? But you can enhance whatever self-soothing skills you have now. And it's always handy to have additional skills for those times when your current skills get overwhelmed, even if that doesn't happen that often. So one way to think about expanding your skills is to think of emotional self-management as a cookbook and the different self-soothing skill sets as individual recipes, not necessarily Midwestern recipes. But OK, for example, I'm a pretty good cook cook for, let's say, a church potluck in Wisconsin. I'll make pot roast and everyone will be happy. Um, and then there's a cow saying, really, everyone? But I beg you, in the name of all you call sacred, don't sacred, don't invite me to a raw vegan potluck. I don't have the right recipes, um, even though nobody is inviting me to raw vegan potlucks. But I'm just saying. But for various even reasons, even though my family situation is pretty bananas, I've got a lot of recipes and skills to deal with family of origin stuff. Right? But every time I deal with uh, the TSA, transphobic security and admission, administration, I think, damn, I got to develop some better self-soothing skills. I don't have the right recipes, right? So I have the right recipes for dealing with family of origin stuff, but not as much stuff for dealing with TSA. So if you think about the places where your self-soothing skills sometimes get overwhelmed, whether that's work, family, romantic relationships, sometimes finding a skill or recipe that works in a similar age, uh, situation can help you expand skills into new areas. Um, what do they have in common? Uh, physical locations, how they make you feel. 
Um, all right. This shit is hard and cats are cute. So I'd like you to meet Sauce the cat who's going to introduce each self-soothing tip. This is my actual cat or the actual cat that lives in my house. Um, so I say to Sauce, you got it from here, boss? And Sauce says, boss, I like the sound of that. Yeah, I got it. Well, we'll get to through this together, y'all. Um, sauce in the comic book version is actually much more consoling than the actual sauce. We always say that sauce looks like she just got home from her first semester at Sarah Lawrence and is kind of a little bit judging our reading choices. But in this particular instance, let's pretend that she's um, very gentle and soft and is just helping us get through self-soothing. All right. Self-soothing tip number one, use TikTok to get through a difficult few moments. Moments. Uh, you could use the ASMR stuff, funny folks going through their daily life. Uh, dancing families. I love a dancing family and say those to your phone in advance. Self-soothing tip number two, already have an activity that you use for self-soothing. Uh, brainstorm with friends, a way to make it portable. Uh, what made me think of this is I, one time when I performed in San Francisco, there was a whole row of bears knitting. Not actually, my mom was like, wait, actual bears? I was like, no, mom, not actual bears. Bears, the kind of kind of gay men that are about bears or gay people that are bears. Um, and they were knitting. And then I asked one of them and, and he was like, yeah, sometimes people say rude things to us at comedy clubs. So uh, we knit to keep ourselves calm. And maybe you do something, some kind of something that soothes you. Lego, for example, I love Lego. Lego will help me regulate when nothing else will, but um, it's not that portable. So I actually have, I created a little self-soothing portable Lego kit in a, um, a drum that candy came in. So it's just like two or three inches tall. I can play with Lego anytime I need to, anytime it's, you know, almost anytime, but the subway or even once in the subway. Self-soothing tip number three, Distra temporarily distract yourself with Sudoku. Sudoku. I have such a hard time with that and or word games. Um, you want to practice when you're not feeling super escalated to fill out what kind of distracto puzzle works for you. And when a participant uh, at the one of the workshops that I did mentioned this, they said that they originally heard of this for the Therapy for Black Girls podcast. Um, so we just credit, which credits do. Um, can also distract yourself with phone games or anything used to create your own world, like Animal Crossing. Um, Self-soothing tip number five, plan ahead. If you know there's a hard date or event coming up, ask friends to send you little encouraging notes to have in your literal or metaphorical pocket. Um, and the nice thing about that is that also is a way of communicating to your friends about something, you know, whether or not they actually are able to write the notes and whether you're actually remember, able to remember where, where you put them, maybe just projecting there, you friends know that a certain date is going to be hard for you um, if they are not folks who put that kind of thing in their calendar. Uh, self-soothing tip number six. All right. This is a tricky one. Make a gratitude list. Sometimes this can backfire, right? Um, like why the hell do I feel bad when I have so much to feel grateful for? I have that problem sometimes. And sometimes there's this dominant culture focus on gratitude. That's just a form of guilt mongering. Um, if making a gratitude list makes you feel terrible, you know, definitely don't do it. This is just, if it helps. I will also say that there is something, I mean, I feel like the dominant culture wants us to make gratitude lists so, you know, we don't have a revolution and that's real too. Um, but sometimes uh, it can help with self-soothing. Self-soothing tip number seven, think about a time when you dealt with a trigger in a way that helped you turn down the volume on your own reactions. Imagine yourself doing that again. Self-soothing tip number eight, play air guitar. It is very hard to be enveloped in anger, et cetera, when you are playing the air guitar. And I have a clip art of a sil silhouetted lesbian playing air guitar. You know that this person is a lesbian because they have a ponytail through their baseball hat. And um, I asked Sauce, can you believe that there's a, uh, they make clip art of a silhouetted lesbian playing air guitar? And Sauce says, yes, 100%. I do believe that. Number nine, tense and then relax each muscle. This is important. And this is an important queer modification. Skip the parts of your body that might make you more triggered. If, but if you end up just, if the only part of your body that doesn't trigger you when you think about it is just your right thumb, well, just react, tense and relax that thumb very thoroughly. Um, you know, don't blame yourself. That's just part of the situation. Do what you can. Uh, Self-soothing tip number 10, rem reminder. Remind yourself these strong feelings are just information. They aren't good. They aren't bad. Even if they feel really bad, they just are. Self-soothing tip number 11. Take a deep breath 
in through your nose, out through your mouth. Deep breathing communicates to your brain, hey, everything is okay. Okay enough to pick up a guitar and sing an 80s power ballad? Hard to say. Do a word find. Uh, and I created a word find that's this trauma work is bull crap. Um, and then Saw says, obviously, we don't think trauma work is bullshit, but it's hard. And it's okay to say that, um, that you're not doing it wrong just because it's hard, right? Just because it's hard doesn't mean you're do doing it wrong. Self-soothing tip number 13, count backward from 100. 99, 98, 97, 96. I think you get the idea, says Sauce. Self-soothing tip number 14, check your jaw. Is it clenched? Unclench it, if you want. I'm not trying to be bossy. Self-soothing tip number 15, draw some shit. Draw out the stuff that's bothering you, or even just scribble. You can get out so much energy from scribbling. And Sauce suggests, or draw out some cats. Cats are super fun to draw. Self-soothing tip number 16. Make a big old paper chip claim. If it might soothe you a bit, and then if you need a paper clip, you'll always have a bunch. Uh, one time when my niece and nephew, Wesley and Viola, were younger, they would always come to my house for New Year's Eve uh, because their parents had got, recently gotten divorced and uh, they were dating. And I never had a date on New Year's Eve, but they did. So my niece and nephew would come when they were little. And I asked one time my niece what she wanted to do. I gave her all these different choices. I believe I'd even made like a Geocities website where she could choose what she wanted. And what she wanted was to make a paper chip, paper clip chain. And I had two um, cases of meaning two of the little things of 10 each that had a hundred in each. So I don't know, whatever that like very many pa paper clips. And that's what we did for hours and hours and hours. And I still have part like 10 years later, I still have that. Self-soothing tip number 17, essential oils. I know, I know, you've probably already tried essential oils. Um, but just in case, sometimes smelling orange in the middle of a terrible Brooklyn winter just might give you a little room to pull out of an otherwise all-encompassing emotional sp spiral. You know, just theoretically, not talking about myself. Self-soothing tip number 18, if you're feeling frustrated with all the things that trigger you, remind yourself of all the things that scare or worry other people that don't bother you at all. If you're a New Yorker, that might be literally thousand things, right? Like everything but Times Square. <laughs> Self-soothing tip number 19, go back to the arts and crafts of yesteryear. If you can find some that don't have negative family or childhood memories associated with them. Remember latch hook? It requires no crafty talent, no thinking, very repetitive and still cheap AF. Um, latch hook is perfect for making cool looking rainbow rugs. Uh, and Saw says, cool, really? Self-soothing tip number 20, play with actual toys. We might have missed it as kids and that makes it extra fun as adults. And also sometimes extra bonus as adults, we often have access to better toys. And I had made the Sesame uh, Street Lego thing and then I had forgotten when I'd taken the picture that there were all these cats still and there's a bunch of cats. Self-soothing tip number 21, keep around physical photos that make you feel something different. Um, maybe someone you love in an uncomplicated way, maybe a pet or better yet, somebody else's pet, um, a selfie at a nice moment, a cute animal, but it should be one that isn't terribly impacted by climate change, uh, patterns. Um, you can also, one of my fun things I like to do when I'm just like trying to pull myself down is sponsor my own cap caption contest with myself or other folks. Just do kind of like a random uh, Google image search, like, you know, Florida man or dude with hat or something like that. And then just do a, a caption contest. You can do it with yourself. Hey, let's see how many different captions I can come up with or do it on social media and have a little contest with your friends. Uh, <laughs> I also put this self-soothing tip number 23. Hello, my name is queer person just trying to get through the day. Cut out and apply to the t-shirt, the one you're wearing. Self-soothing tip number 24, playlists, all the playlists. I love a YouTube playlist. I love the SNL. Uh, musical parodies, queer anthems from when you came out, um, outtakes of pop culture you like, bubblegum pop, uh, background noise apps or channels, and channels made for animals um, to watch themselves, like cat TV, very, very comforting. I think even more so for cats. Self-soothing tip number 25, expose yourself to stuff that makes you laugh. What made you laugh when you were a kid? Who made you laugh when you were a kid? What makes you laugh now? What? Who makes you laugh now? Uh, for me, the Muppet movie, 1979. There's a scene where Miss Piggy and Kermit are sitting in an Italian restaurant and Steve Martin, who is not as famous, uh, comes out uh, as the waiter and he says, would you like to smell the bottle cap? And he has wine. And Kermit goes, 
you know, with his little Kermit nose. And I still, that makes me laugh. Uh, just Kermit going along with smelling the bottle cap just makes me laugh. And also because I'm more of a bottle cap wine person than like a cork wine person. I mean, I don't like wine in general, but I bet that's the kind of wine I would prefer. Uh, Self-soothing tip number 26, design your own ironic motivational poster. Uh, I made one that says happiness. There's a lot more to life than that because my mom always used to say there's more life than being happy, you know. Um, design your own ironic motivational shirt. Uh, I made one that says everything happens for a reason, but usually the reason is racism, capitalism, colonialism, sexism, homophobia, or because someone's being a jerk. Self-soothing tip number 27, celebrate every single victory, no matter how small. Anyway, it was terrible. All right. Self-soothing tip number 20. Oh, I missed 28. I guess self-soothing tip number 28 is don't be a perfectionist. <laughs> and self-soothing tip number 29. And here I have two pictures of friends, one in a homemade Wonder Woman costume and one in a homemade Xena costume. Uh, and it wasn't even Halloween. And I think of the silliest moment. What could recreate that silliness right now? That's the end. Uh, got suggestions for the next edition? Want to have me visit your college or school or llama farm? Um my email is K-E-L-L-I-D-U-N-H-A-M at gmail.com. You can also text me at 215-964-1963 or kellydunham.com. Uh, thanks so much. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.